In this video, we're going to take a quick look at where hydrogens that are on oxygens or nitrogens show up in a proton NMR. So we're looking at OHs or NHs. Perhaps you have an infrared spectrum, and 3,000 is here, maybe 2,000 here, and 1,000 here. And remember, if you get a peak that's a big, broad peak, that's an OH bond out there at 3,300, a big, broad peak at 3,300. Or if you see a peak that looks something like this, kind of a, a peak with a little shark tooth on it, that's an NH. Or if you see a double peak out here somewhere, that might be an NH2, a double hump peak. So if you think you have an OH or an NH inside of your spectrum, or inside of your compound, this is what the proton NMR looks like. <clears throat> Often, again, remember we're from 0 to 10, but OH peaks or NH peaks can be anywhere from a, maybe a half out to maybe 6. And oftentimes they look kind of like a, a kind of a, a blobby, kind of broad looking peak. And that's because... <clears throat> If you have an alcohol, what happens is, is this hydrogen falls off of the molecule to make H plus and O minus, and then maybe it comes back on, it reattaches, so it falls off, comes on, falls off, comes on, and that ends up making it look kind of a blobby looking uh, peak in the hydrogen NMR. It doesn't always look that way. Sometimes the hydrogen sticks on long enough that it'll be split into a doublet or triplet, but often it's the blobby looking peak inside of your spectrum. So let's take a look at an example alcohol. Let's see, let's study ethanol. Here's what the NMR spectrum of ethanol looks like. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we'll look at the bottom half of the NMR spectrum. So this is what the spectrum looks like. We have a quartet out here. We have a peak that looks something like that. And then we have a triplet. Now, if we see a spectrum like this and we think we have a, there's the big broad peak at 3300 in the IR, we think we have an alcohol. If I were to look at this, the broad blobby peak would be the OH peak, the hydrogen, so OH. This quartet, since it's around three, represents this CH2, and it's a quartet because it's next door to three hydrogens. It doesn't couple this hydrogen if it's a blob because this one's falling on or off. It doesn't stay on as a little magnet to make this split. So it's only split by the ones on the carbon. And these three hydrogens are these right here. And these three are a triplet because they're next to the CH2 and they're regular hydrogens. So it looks something like that. Now one trick, because this hydrogen falls on and off, comes on and off, is you can do this little trick. You can take your ethanol, so you just take your NMR tube, you add heavy water. This is water where, instead of regular hydrogens, it has heavier hydrogens. Hydrogen is the way too, deuterium. And these are NMR silent. They do not show up in the NMR. So what happens when you add D2O to an alcohol is because this hydrogen falls on or off, it gets replaced with one of these deuteriums. And your ethanol becomes deuterated ethanol. And this does not show up in the NMR. So this is what would happen to that NMR spectrum. So you run an NMR, you take the tube out, you put a little D2O in it and a couple drops, you shake it up, and you rerun it. Let me write my scale down here. It's the same scale as before. Now, you still have your quartet in the exact same location. You still have your triplet in the exact same location. Th those hydrogens on the carbons won't move. But the one that was on the alcohol, now it's a deuterium, so this peak disappears. 
or it gets very, very tiny if there's just a little bit of hydrogen left on there because this was the hydrogen on the alcohol. So if you see a peak disappear, you know, ah, that was a hydrogen on an oxygen. Amines do the same things. If you have a hydrogen on a nitrogen, it can also be exchanged with deuterium. Just a little trick to help us figure out where the alcohols here. Now, let me show you one more example where the peak is in a blob. So let's look at isopropyl alcohol and predict what it would look like, or I'll show you what it will look like. So first, <clears throat> these six hydrogens all show up in the same location. They're chemically equivalent. They're different than that one, which are different than this one. So if we were to predict, these are regular ones, zero to one. This one, since it's next door to the oxygen, would be three to four. And this hydrogen could be anywhere from a half to six. So if we run the spectrum, you end up getting a big doublet down here. These six hydrogens, the blue ones, and they're doublet because there's one hydrogen neighbor. And this one hydrogen ends up looking, I use this color, it ends up looking something like this. Three, four, five, six, seven. So you might think it's a septet because it's next to six hydrogens over there. And if this hydrogen falls on or off, it might be a blobby looking peak like that. So a lot of times this is what this NMR would look like. But if you run it just right, maybe if you get all the water out, um, that helps the hydrogen not exchange and fall on or off as much. Then sometimes instead of a blob, it actually might split into a peak, a doublet because it's seeing that one hydrogen next door. Now, if it shakes hands, I like to say shake hands, but if it couples with this one hydrogen and becomes a doublet because of it, then it's got to shake back hands with that hydrogen. So instead of just being a septet, if that ends up being a doublet, this peak ends up looking a little more complicated. It looks kind of like a hairy septet. It's, it's a septet because of this one, and it's a doublet because of that one hydrogen. So it looks a little messier. But sometimes the peaks do show up like this. Now, when I say a peak shows, the alcohol peak shows up between... The broad peak for an alcohol might show up down around a half all the way up to six. And the really interesting thing is, even for the same molecule, if I run it today in my NMR, I might get the peak at one and a half. But if I come back tomorrow and try to run the compound, it might be at two and a half. They move around. And here's why they move around. The hydrogen on an alcohol, it, since we have gazillions of these molecules in the NMR tube, they can hydrogen bond with other alcohol, oxygens, or and then the, it can, all of these, the more of these we have together, it can hydrogen bond more and more. And that starts to influence the electron cloud around the hydrogen. So the more concentrated the sample is, the more you, sample you put in your NMR tube, it tends to make the alcohol peak, the OH hydrogen, move downfield to the left in the NMR spectrum. And even the temperature of the, so the concentration matters. It can move around from day to day if you have changed your concentration. The temperature of the room matters because if the, if the, warm, if the room is warmer, the molecules are vibrating faster, you have less hydrogen bonding. And then, so they would move more to the right. So they move around from day to day. So we don't worry too much about where they show up. What we're looking for for an OH or an NH is usually they're blobby, but sometimes they're not. So hopefully that's helpful. That's how the OH or NH peaks show up in a proton NMR. I hope that was helpful for you. Click on the next video in this series and learn more about proton NMR.